Hi, I'm Xin Tsai from National Taiwan University. Presenting Air Racket, perceptual design of ungrounded directional force feedback to improve virtual racket sport experiences. This work is conducted with my co-authors, Yilun Tsai, Zhaorong Lai, Derek Zhou, Lauren Wei, as well as our two advisors, Long Pan Zhen and Bang Qiong Chen. Racket sports such as ping pong, badminton, and tennis are some of the most popular virtual experiences. For example, Bui Sport is one of the all-time best-selling games with more than 80 million copies sold. Also, recent racket sport games have been introduced to virtual reality and even includes online gameplay to provide switch and competitive multiplayer experiences. In real world, this experience includes directional impact force on the racket, which includes the haptic sensation of tactile, kinesthesia, and proprioception. But given racket sports high mobility, current experience is usually provided in limited fidelity, for example, controller vibration. Directional and grounded force feedback technologies, such as air jet and propeller-based solution, have the potential to provide more realistic haptic experiences as they provide an actual directional force in handheld and wearable form, enabling player mobility. However, the current maximum force magnitude of ungrounded force haptic devices are around 5 newton, which is two orders of magnitude smaller than peak force in real-world racket sports, which taking tennis for example can exceed 400 newton. This drastic difference in force magnitude makes haptic feedback hook for racket sport especially challenging to design, and how to render impact force with larger magnitude. The main limitation we were addressing in our project. So, in Air Racket, we explore a solution based on happy perception. Specifically, we verify and utilize that with longer impact duration, user perceives larger impact force magnitude. And to feed this insight in application, we created devices for a set of brackets board using compressed air propulsion jet. Our propulsion force system consists of a pneumatic control system that modulates the air pressure from air supply and sets the output force magnitude. With two solenoid valves, we control the on-off of force output on one DOF direction, which is for forehand and backhand stroke. And three handheld devices for virtual ping pong, badminton, and tennis are connected to the pneumatic control system mimicking the real weight and welding sensation of their real-world counterparts. We use OptiTrackable capsule system to track them in VR, but the version with Vive Tracker can be found in our open-source project folder. The maximum force of these devices are 3.2 Newton, with a 22 millisecond rise time to reach it, while the noise label is 77 dB, similar to an indoor tennis heat. The maximum frequency of continuous impulse is 40 Hz at 1 Newton and 25 Hz at 3 Newton. After creating these devices, we continue to the part of our main user study. First, we verify the assumption and question that whether impact force duration affects the perceived force magnitude. To answer these questions, we conducted a magnitude estimation study to understand the relationship and scale between impact force duration and its perceived magnitude. In this study, participants rated target forces of various duration and intensity with verbal numerics where a constant force with fixed duration serves as a reference. The haptic stimuli is given without visual or audio feedback, and our experimental duration range range from 50 milliseconds to 350 milliseconds, while the experimental force magnitude range from 0.5 Newton to 2.5 Newton. The result was normalized by the reference force, and here is the average mean across 12 participants. Participants recorded a significantly higher perceived force magnitude as force duration increased. For example, the perceived force magnitude of impact with 350 milliseconds are perceived to be four times stronger than its 15 millisecond counterpart. Also, the perceived increase was significantly higher for long versus short devices for all durations. We further analyze this result with logarithmic transformation of duration, which find a strong linear relationship between log of duration and perceived force intensity. This result is in accordance with so-called power law in previous magnitude estimation studies. The same power function relationship has also been found previously in audio stimuli's duration and its perceived loudness, also video stimuli's duration and its perceived brightness. To put the finding in practice, we construct four mapping models to map expected force map magnitude in real world to our system output. These models are with different concepts, including duration variation, magnitude scaling, and their combination. Two of our models change the force magnitude only. Well, in the first baseline model, we matched our output peak force value to real-world intensity, but render system max when we can attain it. The second scaled model is a linear interpolation across our system output, mapping the system max to the user's maximum relative swing motion. In both models, the output impact duration is constant. In the next model, we started to explore the concept of duration variation, in which we render constant force magnitude as system max, but with varying duration corresponding to the user's relative swing motion. The last model is a combination of the previous two concepts, where we were scaling force magnitude with varying duration at the same time. 
To find the proper duration range that we can modulate and scale with, we conducted two supplementary studies. One is a participatory design study to find an acceptable duration variation range that we can utilize, which we found users longest acceptable duration range can be 70 times longer than real world impacts contact time, 5 milliseconds. The second is an absolute detection threshold study to find the minimum perceivable force using our first scaling models. Although not in this video, details of this two study can be found in our paper. Then we conducted a final evaluation among this candidate design. We recruited 24 participants to the ping pong, badminton, and tennis VR scenes to experience and compare these models. In each virtual scene, we have three different ball serving speed as well as aiming targets. Participants were asked to keep the ball in the aiming target to make sure their swing are within a similar speed range. We conclude the result in three main findings. First, average lever scale on perceived hefty realism and profits show duration varying method can improve users' impact experiences. And for ping pong and badminton, we found significant improvement for the combination of first magnitude scaling and duration variation. This result shows that given the exact same system limitations, perceptual design and especially multivariate perceptual design can significantly improve the user experience versus the baseline or physics based model. Benefit from finer and more distinguishable feedback in gameplay. For tennis, no statistical significance is shown in weaker data, but System Max Plus duration variation was preferred by nearly the half of participants. While well, participants have commented that for tennis, the stronger the force, the more realistic it felt. So System Max Plus duration variation was best, which might indicate that such model is likely to work better for experiences that are consistently far above the system capability. Besides, few of participants have indicated that better building of feedback intensity help them adjust the swing speed for the next ball to aim at the target, which indicates how users' performance can benefit from a happy system's overall dynamic. Before the end of this presentation, I'd like to highlight some discussion points as well as future works. Compared to prior video haptic approaches, the haptic illusion we discover is unique in that it does not require video feedback. Therefore, it may work especially well in combination with a wide range of video haptic techniques that create impact sensation. For example, using freezing the frame to provide pseudo impact. Impact sensation is common in everyday and VR experiences, such as egocentric impact of being hit, perceptual of coming, recoil when firing a weapon, or kicking a football, which all have drastic limitation in force magnitude compared to real world, which should also benefit by our feedback design. Lastly, while our devices are with one view at first direction as fixed points, a motorized moment arm or more degree of freedom may lead to even more realistic experiences. To support the hefty sensation of slicing a ball or hit that is an off the sweet spot. Also, additional record design including hockey and so on can be found in our project folder. Thanks for your listening.